My name is Elizabeth Sabadage Wolf, and I'm from Austria. Uh huh. What happened to you in in your uh, uh, journey? Yes. Uh, well, it's a journey that took ten years. That began in in late uh, 2009. Uh, it's like I said, it's taken me a decade of my life uh, fighting for free speech in Europe. Uh, I was convicted of denigration of religious teachings of a legally recognized religion in Austria, which is in effect a blasphemy law uh -huh. for for <laughs> asking a rhetorical question in a seminar that I gave back in 2008, asking uh, what do you call the behavior of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, uh, marrying a six-year-old and consummating the marriage when she was nine, the, name, the girl's name was Aisha, if, what do you call it, if not pedophilia? So it was a rhetorical question. Uh, I was convicted of, like I said, denigration of religious teachings. I appealed and appealed and appealed all the way up to the Austrian Supreme Court. Uh, I lost all the way to the Supreme Court. And after that, I went to a supranational court called the European Court of Human Rights, mm -hmm. which is a sort of Supreme Court of Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we lost again. I mean, mm -hmm. I lost again, but mm -hmm. I, when I lose, everybody loses in Europe. So mm -hmm. now we have a ruling from the European Court of Human Rights, uh, which in effect says that uh, the Muslim's right not to be offended um, is greater than my right to free speech. But what was it that was uh, that that you said wasn't false? Well, it wasn't it wasn't slander. Uh, well, according to Islamic law, it was slander, of course. So um, it was it's it's a strange situation because uh, the Austrian uh, legal system sort of became the arbiter for Islamic uh, law. Uh, it was a Sharia ruling, in effect, because you have. Uh, you had the entire Islamic world rejoicing after the verdict was passed down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that's actually proof uh, that it's it's Sharia law, and uh, that Sharia slander laws uh, were upheld by the European Court. And it you know the irony is you didn't even need any Muslim complaint about what I'd said mm -hmm. back in 2008 and nine, mm -hmm. uh, but rather you had a secular government uh, take over and do the job and they did it very well mm -hmm. what does that signal to uh, free people free societies around the world do you, do you remember uh, what Mohammed Atta said when he uh, hijacked the plane that went into the World Trade Center one of the planes he uh, said, if you remain quiet, everything will be okay. And that's exactly what it is. My court case signals to non-Muslims, uh, you need to remain quiet and not talk about Islam in any slanderous way, uh, and then everything will be all right. So this is a terrible, terrible sign. Uh, and there are so many people already uh, silenced because of that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you made a, a religious criticism. What about criticisms of uh, uh, Islamism and, and the actions that uh, either Muslims or the politicians who uh, facilitate uh, Islamism, it, th those kind of criticisms, are those also now taboo? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't subscribe to the distinction between Islam and Islamism. I don't belong to this uh, group that distinguishes it. Um, any criticism is taboo, whether it's Islam or Islamism. Uh, you must not criticize uh, the religion of Islam or anything associated with it, and that's that's the problem. If you can't if you can't name the enemy, and obviously uh, the red green axis that we just heard about uh, for most of the day, the red green axis between the socialists and and uh, the uh, I, w I would call it Muslims. I would say Quran abiding Muslims. Okay, that's a distinction I would make. Who, who are trying to spread Islam as a who, political force? Who, no, who? Well, I mean, there's no difference in Islam between uh, religion and politics. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. It's a distinction that we make, we as non Muslims make. Um, but. Uh, 
they they have they have won and and that's that's a tragedy they, they I, won that case they won that case uh, we lost we lost massively I am I'm I mean the first thing I said uh, after I heard the verdict well, I, I apologize to my daughter because I want her to grow up as a free person and she no longer is a free person and uh, the second thing um, you know I, I will no longer speak publicly in Europe in all of Europe in the jurisdiction of uh, the European Court of Human Rights so I'm now moving I'm shifting my focus uh, to the United States to um, to help Americans realize that your protection is the First Amendment Mm -hmm. You need to protect your, your constitution and your First Amendment. It's the bulwark of free speech. We don't have anything like that. There's nothing like it uh, in the on the entire planet. Mm -hmm. 